Hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows. I thought among all of the hype, there are some folks that have been commenting to the negative around why the Quest 3 is not for them. And I feel it's important as a creator, I am obligated to at least provide the other side of the coin. So in this video, I do want to discuss reasons why the Quest 3 may not be for all of you and why you may want to hold off purchasing it until the full reviews are out. Is it worth the upgrade at least as well if you're on Quest 2 or Quest Pro? Hopefully I answer some of the questions that you have. So let's get into the Steve knows. Not even a dad yet. But if you want to hear more about the device, please check out my hands-on review, my everything you need to know, and the new features video. So I think that's enough chin wagging. Let's get started. So starting with the obvious is that you may want to get into VR for the first time, but you are on a budget. You could already own a headset like the Quest Pro, or it's just flat out too expensive for the upgrade if you have a Quest 2 or any other headset. The Quest 3 is in the low end budget range in the VR space and it offers some of the most bang for the buck around, but that does not mean it's not expensive. In the VR space, I feel that, at least myself, I often forget how expensive things are because I'm so used to seeing new headset releases or new accessories that are like 2,000 pound, 3,000 pound, accessories for 1,500 pound. So when you hear 500 pound, you think that's a great deal, but 500 pound is a lot of money and it could still be too much for you. Then maybe there is an option for the Quest 2, which is currently available for 300 pounds and $300 and even cheaper if you buy a second hand one and a second hand one may help somebody who wants to actually upgrade to the Quest 3, sharing the love, the circle of cash. If you already own a Quest 2, you may not feel it warrants the upgrade due to some things I'm going to touch on very shortly. But for right now, you may not think it warrants the upgrade because the Quest 2 and therefore the Quest Pro should continue to be supported for a while by developers as it's the most mainstream ecosystem, the most mainstream device around. So no rush to buy the Quest 3 right now, especially when there are no exclusive titles to tease you. And I do believe there's going to be continued support. The only thing I think you'll see exclusive for early on is mixed reality content and that may not be something you're interested in. If you have the Quest Pro then the upgrade difference is actually even worse. You do not get eye tracking on Quest 3, you do not get face tracking, you get the same optical lenses and an even smaller power increase due to the fact that the Quest Pro is using the XR2 Plus Gen 1. There's even reduced RAM in the Quest 3 over the Pro. We go from 12 gig to 8 gig and less storage. So is the new chipset and the resolution boost worth that extra cost right now? Something I learned as a kid that's kind of stuck with me um, around money is that money today is worth more than money tomorrow. If that makes sense, think of it like if you add inflation, 500 pound today, 500 pound next year because of inflation is not actually going to be worth the same, it's going to be reduced. Another reason for this not being appealing is that you could be a PC VR gamer through and through, and you need to have something like a DisplayPort connection as it's unrivaled with its visual quality by current standards. The USB-C, it's kind of needed for uh, the power output, the data transfer, and the visual streaming. And I agree with that as well. I would have loved a DisplayPort option for wired PC VR over USB-C. But as I just said, it's easier from a consumer experience perspective. The charging, the data transfer, the video feed, it's all through one simple connection. You also may prefer Lighthouse tracking for full 360 tracking instead of the inside out option that the Quest provides. And you don't want to shed an additional £300 or $300 for the Quest Pro controllers so you can have full 360 tracking inside out, taking the total up to 800 for a new headset. And you should also be aware that there are rumors circling that Valve is working on something that could be of more interest to you since the release of Steam VR 2.0 in its beta. There have been suspicions and a Valve Index 2.0 or potentially codenamed Deckard could be announced and that would be a PC VR dream, which it could have things like the split rendered technique that we've heard about, which is state of the art for wireless PC VR gaming. And if you followed, sadly it's Bradley, he is full force on this. So I will link his content down below for you to follow if you're into PC VR. If you are, you probably already know of him, let's be honest. If you already own a Quest for your PC VR though, you're gonna have Wi-Fi 6 support for the Quest 2 and Wi-Fi 6E support 
on the Quest Pro, much like the Quest 3. So for the Pro, it may not be worth the upgrade if it's your PC VR device, because you have more features on it that the Quest 3 does not have. But from a Quest 2 perspective, if you get the Quest 3, you'll have increased bandwidth, you'll have reduced latency from the 6 gigahertz frequency band. You'll also have reduced compression due to the new AV1 codec instead of H.264 and 265, I believe they are, we see on current devices that is expected to deliver better quality visuals. So I think on this front and to most points made here, it's wise to wait for full reviews on October 10th or around that date to really find out what is going on with this headset for PC VR. The press events and the limited time that I've had with the device, it just hasn't really given the chance to truly deep dive and answer your questions around this correctly. So a recommendation there is if you're on the fence, wait. Another big reason why you may not feel that this is for you or worth the upgrade to the Quest 3 just yet is how much do you care about mixed reality content? It has been made very apparent that this is the push from Meta. They want mixed reality, mixed reality, mixed reality. They pushed it on the Pro and it's now here on the Quest 3. So mixed reality is the investment. That's what's being sold. And you could feel like Carmack, who did not have the most positive view on the mixed reality features on these headsets. He's wanting a bigger push on the VR side of things than mixed reality. So on the Quest 3, we do run the risk of getting completely bombarded with mixed reality content that we do not care about. And we just want great VR experiences that are far and few between. It was a gimmick on the Pro and the Quest 2 is just completely terrible. So you, I would understand if your views are not positive on it. Personally, the mixed reality stuff that I did get to try was a big part of why I'm actually excited for this device. Seeing Brick Tales Lego and trying some of the mixed reality experiences out and seeing that you can create custom homes with augments that are coming soon. This is all appealing, but it's not for everyone. Perhaps it'd be better to wait for mixed reality content to drop before investing if this is something that you just were not sure about. After all, it's always about the games. And if there are no games, why fork out crazy amounts of money to play experiences that you already own. You could buy a PS5 and an Xbox Series X, even go on holiday. My own opinion though, that I mentioned in my review is that the mixed reality stuff is very good and it is fit for purpose, but it's not as good as what some of you may be expecting. There is still some grain. There is still some warping. It is not this most beautiful retina display looking thing you've ever seen. It's good, but it's not perfect. Maybe the biggest reason to avoid the Quest 3 is that it is Meta owned, therefore Facebook owned, and they obviously have a long history of data privacy concerns, and a VR headset is a huge potential data farm. Even though they have come out and stated how data is being used in cases that we were really worried about, such as the mapping of your room, that mapping your home environment should remain local on your headset. But you, you never know. I know some of you, you just think, how can, I, how can I trust you, Zuck? How? So you do not need to create a Facebook account for this. You can create a custom email and then create a meta account to keep your private life separate from your gaming persona profile. If that's something that would help you um, and is preventing you from wanting to dive in and get this headset. But I get the concern and why this is a huge turnoff. And that's just never going to change for some people. And I can't blame you. So if you don't want a Meta-owned standalone device, you may be interested in a Quest 3 alternative in the works that looks to be the Pico 5. This looks pretty comparable in specs from the rumors that we've received, although we don't have every single detail. There's things like the megapixels on the camera rather than the quality of the user's view that we see with the Quest 3, which is 18 PPD. We've got two 16 megapixel cameras. There's a single panel LCD on the Pico 5. We get two LCD panels on the Quest 3. The resolution though is humongous compared to the Quest 3. 2560 by 2560 per eye is rumored. And if they can get the weight of this headset to be like the Pico 4, whew, it's going to be light as a feather on your face. The headset felt empty. So this could be a great alternative. The ecosystem of Pico I thought was really good. It had tons of like Japanese inspired and virtual reality games. I was a fan of those growing up, not the VR games, but that kind of that art style. So it's really great to see and experience those kinds of games on that platform. The one issue I have though is that VR is very social. So make sure if you're buying this headset as an alternative and you want to play with friends, that what you're wanting to play is going to be cross-platform supported. Just, it'll be terrible to get a device and then find that you can't actually play with anyone. They often are cross-platform, but just, just make sure. With the Quest 3, there is also the concern that you guys keep bringing up around controller tracking. We are still to stress test these controllers. 
Are the new controllers made worse to try and push the Pro controllers for 360 tracking, or do they actually work by using a combination of the lights in the remote instead of having the light ring? So there is going to be more occlusion there, so how effective is that going to be, but in combination with tracking your hands as well? Some of you have been very keen-eyed and noticed that there aren't cameras at the top of the headset, so arms above your head, how is that going to work? These things need to be tested, so again, Perhaps wait for full review so we can truly test these things before putting in a pre-order and waiting for launch day. Because if the, the offer that they've got for Asgard's Wrath, that's on until the 24th of January next year. So no rush if you want that game. And speaking of launches, there doesn't seem to be much going on with this device at launch, apart from enjoying existing titles with increased visual fidelity, some mixed reality experiences that are ready. And of course, we're waiting for Asgard's Wrath, Assassin's Creed, and Augment, and the body tracking that we just discussed, all coming later on in the year or next year. So everything that's being pushed that's rather exciting about this device seems to be future content. So that could be a reason to wait as well. When the content is here, then we can invest because you'll have better knowledge on what this is actually going to deliver thanks to the reviews. All of the above being said though, I am very excited for this technology. I'm right alongside those of you who are excited, but as I said, this is not for everyone and i wanted to bring up some things for you guys to ponder you may want to wait uh, until christmas until all the reviews are out until the official launch because there'll be even more reviews then and we would also have some of the big games they would have dropped already and we could finally review and test them how do they actually compare because right now it's just hearsay from my own opinion it's hard to deliver receipts pre-launch based on a press demo we can give our impressions but providing receipts and really stress testing anything that's going to need a lot more time so any more reasons you can think of this is a safe space let out your anger all of your reasoning and logic down below in the comment section it'll be really interesting to read this thread it could be a really really great discussion and if you have the opposite view something positive to say put that down below as well because it will spark discussion so thank you so much for watching i hope this helped in some some regard have a great week happy gaming guys good day